Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Christian Harloff. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome back to another episode <laughs> of Collider Movie Talk, and I would love to tell you what Ashley was saying about Jared Leto and what special video she wants to do to go viral. We might find out. We might find out. That's great. Also, here, are John Schnepp. Yeah, the slapping jack. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Also here, Mark Allen. There's a lot more than just slapping and jacking going <laughs> oh, on man. in that dirty, dirty head of Ashley Mobile. Oh, this kind of party. Uh, well, Warner Brothers came out firing last night in a DCU extravaganza. Kevin Smith and comic book legend Jeff Johns discussed what to expect from the DC universe. Although there were many things that caught fans' attention, it seems the brand new Suicide Squad trailer was the talk of the night. In the trailer set to the background of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, we get a better look at the tone, the team's dynamic, and a detailed look at the Joker in action. Christian, what do you think of the new Suicide Squad trailer? I loved this trailer. I loved it. It was, and I and I've said it when we did our uh, anticipated DC movie, comic book movies. I had this over Batman vs Superman, and I still put it there. I think that the tone is amazing. Everything that David Ayer kind of promised that he would bring, the it's chaotic. The whole film is chaotic. And I will tell you this: hold on to your balls. Um, Jai Ladies. Courtney is the best thing in this trailer. Oh my! Jai Courtney God. looks great in this trailer. It's like it's like a totally different actor. Mm -hmm. it, like he looks like he's having fun. He looks like he has personality. Now the movie might be different. I don't know, but everything that I saw stood out for him, and I couldn't believe it. And then you get the look of the Joker. Man, that laugh. That laugh. He nailed it already. Jared Leto is, is the type of actor that we know is going to bring it. Mm -hmm. And when you see what he has to, because Mark and I just did a trailer reaction video for this for Suicide Squad, and we were talking about how he had to follow Heath Ledger. That is a tough thing to do, and so far, it looks like you know he's going to do it. Mark, what do you think? You know, you hit the nail on the head earlier, Christian. Not after the hold your balls thing, but when you said personality, <laughs> because that is what I got from this trailer, and it's what I didn't necessarily get or want from the teaser that we saw at Comic Con. That trailer was great; it had a gritty, darker tone. This one injected some fun into these guys that are totally not superheroes, but we might be pulling for by the end of the movie. And I think Margot Robbie's closing line said it all. When I can't remember exactly what she said, but she's talking about how we're the bad guys. This is right. this is what we do. Seeing all these men mentally deranged individuals hang out together. It's like the cuckoo's nest has gone wild and is set free amongst the city. I love seeing Will Smith in this trailer. I love, you're right, your boy Jai Courtney I thought was great, Margot Robbie, and yes, seeing the Joker. I didn't think Heath Ledger won once watching it. I was just thinking this is a new version of the Joker. This is what I want to see. Best thing about this trailer, didn't give away anything. We got to see a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. Didn't give away any plot points other than what we already knew. I love when trailers do that. Yep. Yeah, I thought I think this is a, the good sequel to the very first Comic Con trailer. Once again, not telling too much about the plot, other than we know that the, a group of supervillains has been put together by the government to take on something nastier, and you know, and that their lives are disposable, and if they do this job, they'll get a, a new lease on life. I thought it was great, and I, I agree. Seeing the a little bit more of the humor, a little bit more of the the quirkiness and the weirdness that is going to be this film was exciting and I, I definitely I, I, I'm, I'm happy you said that about Jai Courtney because I was going to come in and be like <laughs> man you know what I was really impressed he with was Jai great. Courtney he great. I don't know how you could hold it on him and I'm so, I was happy to hear you say that because he was really good everything they showed is like it's like if that's just the best of Jai Courtney and everything's downhill from there it's still really good I was sitting next to him when the, when he had already seen the trailer but just watching Harloff's world crumble in a pond no right? it wasn't but, no because look the, the thing is your like, hatred for, must now go was, away it's true he turned <laughs> yeah. me to the light side yeah. but what I'll tell you though soak in the goodness <laughs> no soak in the goodness why are you putting in a Rise. good performance man be terrible <laughs> um, but no I actually there's there's two movies like The Water Diviner which was an alright movie he's in for like two seconds but he's good in it yeah. he's in he's in that movie with uh what was it unbroken uh -huh. with with mm -hmm. that angelina julie and he was good in that in it for two seconds it seems to be that when he's in these like supporting roles that it's that same thing that happened with sam worthington as where sam worthington when you watch him in movies like cake or when he was in everest he really shines mm -hmm. it's when you put him in the forefront and say that's your movie star that's your guy and die you know the last the die hard movie that he did and, and terminator with jai courtney mm -hmm. 
and maybe these are the roles he needs to do because when he didn't have when he's not carrying on his back and he's part of a team, it looks like it's working. I don't blame him for Die Hard Five at all. I blame the director. Speaking of directors, it seems like David Ayer has a clear lock on the exact tone he wanted to get yeah. from this trailer. Yeah. And so now August can't get here fast enough. It's like it's Batman v Superman's great. We're very excited about it. I can't wait to see the next movie. In the I also I also like seeing like all the different powers of the different supervillains because I wasn't yeah. I wasn't not a hundred percent sure who Slipknot was. I know it's a band, but then uh-huh. who's this dude with the weird skull face? <laughs> Oh, he's got bizarre powers of flame and stuff. And it was cool to see that they're actually going to, they're not shying away from the insane, weird, supernatural flow of it. I felt the Joker uh, that Jared Leto's got is a really good amalgam of all the previous Jokers we've seen before with his take on it as well. Like, even that line, like, wait till you see my toys, reminded me of the Jack Nicholson Batman, but with a little (laughs) bit more of a violent twist on it. I like the way he looks with all the tats and the weird, you know, fake teeth. I mean, he's creepy as hell, and that's how I want the Joker. So any new version of the Joker that we see, even after Jared, has got to now it's got this one to be. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And I think that what it does, and even listen to that special when you heard Kevin Smith and Jeff Johns talking about it, they clearly know that this movie comes out right after it's Batman v Superman, and it comes out in August. It has to further the DCU, yeah. and it's certainly going to do that. And it's going to and and. It's exciting to know that these characters that we see here, I don't assume anyone's going to die out of the main villains, maybe, who knows, but they it'd be interesting to see that these villains that we're actually going to be rooting for, even though right. they're, they're clearly bad guys, um, when they're going to be the standalone bad guys, maybe, you know, with Harley Quinn fighting with the Joker in the Batman standalone movie, right. it's pretty exciting now that we're going to have a, kind of a, an, an attraction to, to them. Killer Croc eats people. That's all I know. Yeah. I'm in. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the humor. I do not want it twisting and turning into a, a Batman and Robin. Like with trailers, it's hard to sometimes tell what the tone of the film is because it's a lot of quick cuts and action and people jumping and punching and explosions. You're like, that looks awesome. And then there's one or two lines that kind of work in the trailer out of context. Right. Then you're watching the film and some corny stuff starts happening. You're like, what is going on? I don't, I, I'm praying that that's not what happens with this film. I don't want that to be the, the case. So please don't let make that be real. <laughs> I'd love to hear what you guys think about the suicide trailer. Make sure, obviously, for the live stream right now, give your thoughts. Tell us exactly what you thought of the trailer. And if you're watching this on a replay, let us know exactly what you thought. Did you like it? Did you think it stinks? Comment and tell us. All right, Ashley, what's next? All right, well, on top of the sexy Joker, also included in the DC special, the very first footage of the highly anticipated Wonder Woman standalone film. It was revealed that we will be getting an origin story of the iconic Amazon. Wonder Woman is directed by Patty Jenkins and stars Gal Gadot and Chris Pine and releases in 2017. Schnepp, what did you think of the first look at Wonder Woman? I thought it was fantastic. You know what? It's it's. It's everything I was hoping that they would do with Wonder Woman. And especially just these, like, I think it was like maybe eight or nine shots while Jeff Johns is talking about it with Kevin Smith. They're like, what did you do? And what's this? It's her origin story. And you just see these kind of, you know, her on horseback riding or her up in a tree somewhere, her like walking with a uh, uh, pine as, you know, it, I, I just thought the way that the, the shot looks beautiful and also a few scenes of her taken out, like I guess it's a bunch of Nazis. I don't know. Her fighting looked really cool. So those little moments makes me feel like, you know, when Batman v Superman comes out, we're going to see a Wonder Woman trailer attached to that for sure. And we'll get all these bits together into a, something that tells a little bit more of the story. But from just those little quick glimpses, it looks really fun. Yeah, I like the way it looks for sure. And I think that I like Patty Jenkins stamp on it already. Mm-hmm. But what I really took away from it is that this is DC's version of Captain America. Yeah. As where they're going back in time, doing the period piece, setting it up. Chris Pine seems to be, like you were saying before, the the Peggy Carter of it. And we're going to transition her from where she was into our world. And you saw that. You felt that that feel. I already know the tone of the movie. And I think Gal Gadot looks, we didn't really hear her say too much yet. But as a badass and her fighting, I love the slow motion scenes. And I love the way they they described her. In that, again, comparing it to Captain America, where he's the Boy Scout, she's the Girl Scout. She is. She's super kind. She, she, She wants to do right. But she'll kick your face in. And I think that that's exactly what she needs to be. This has been coming for a very long time to get this character there's been so many struggles from Joss Whedon's version back in 2005 and it went through and it's been going through the Warner Brothers system forever and then now they got this DCU it's a no-brainer I really like it's kind of it doesn't it doesn't look cheesy right it looks like they're taking it serious and they kind of need to for this but I really dug it Mark yeah to quote the late great Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter gorgeous yeah. and I'm not just talking about Gal Gadot either I thought this entire movie looked really beautiful the way it's shot I do have a hesitation I'm surprised you boys didn't bring up is that the 
action scenes to me. We saw like two of them. It's mm -hmm. fine. I get it. I didn't like that we're slowing down and doing that Resident Evil Matrix stuff every action scene I've seen so far. I'd like to see her kick ass in real time for a majority of this movie. So it makes me a little nervous that that's all they showed of her beating the crap out of people. But look, having said all that, some people were a little concerned, okay? <clears throat> you hear Chris Pine is being cast in this movie, and it's like, oh, no, is all this other star power, more experience going to overshadow actual Wonder Woman? No. This is Wonder Woman's movie, and you got that even from the 35 seconds or whatever amount of time we saw footage of Wonder Woman. She looks like she has a stamp on this character, mm -hmm. and I think that's why they didn't risk featuring her in Batman v Superman right. or not showing her in the trailers because, look, she's going to be a prominent part of that movie and she's going to be everything in this new film coming out. And I think it makes sense. It's going to be a cool movie now. I'm excited. Yeah, everything about the Wonder Woman clips that we saw now makes me feel like Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman is the secret weapon. She's like, the oh, you're gonna, your walk away is like, I can't wait to see the Wonder Woman movie. And yeah, God, you know? I love that logo. I love yeah. that W. Somebody yeah. tweeted me yesterday because I, I was like, that's the best logo for an 80s rock band yeah. that they never took. Paul McCartney and Wings in the 70s, it was pretty close Very to the close. W. I love that. And I also, what I liked, again, going back to what Jeff Johns was saying, is that you had, uh, you, we know enough about Superman's origin. We've done it a million times. You know, we know mm -hmm. Batman's origin. A lot of people don't know Wonder Woman's origin, especially right. not in film. Right. So the, I think that it's a given that you have to do this further. Uh, Again, referencing Captain America. So, Ashley, did you get a chance to see any of this last night? I did, and I'm kind of even shocked that... I mean, because I don't know as much of Wonder Woman as you guys know because I'm not familiar with the comic world, but I'm so shocked as, like, we are remotely okay with this because I felt like your, your guys' expectations were not... You know, you weren't going to be excited for the way that this was going to be turning out. So I'm excited for this now and hearing you guys say that you're okay with the way this is turning out, it's even making me more excited for it. Well, I think a lot of the trepidation when the original casting, as you yeah. can go back and listen to Camp here rant about it, <laughs> yeah. uh, Gal Gadot, exactly. he was like, she's a, you know, you yeah. know, she's a model and this and that. But it's like, I've always been the said like, look, they cast her for a reason. We might not know that right. she's a great actress, but whatever she did in that ca audition won yeah. them over and said she can be Wonder Woman not only in Batman v Superman but in her own standalone movie. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, I guess, discover that. I think they're holding the, her her voice back. You see her talking in the you know talking about Wonder Woman. That's her voice. That's what she's right. gonna sound like. But how does she project and right. how do, how is she actually play Wonder Woman? I think they're going to save that for the trailer. You're going to hear her talk in the trailer. And she certainly looks like Wonder Woman, yeah. so it works. All right, Ashley, what's next? During the DC special, fans got a look at even more characters that will be joining the Justice League. Aquaman, Cyborg, Flash were all profiled, and it was also revealed that after much speculation, the Green Lantern will indeed be joining the party. Mark, what were your thoughts on the information we learned about these new heroes? Love seeing these tidbits. I love this, these little one-minute teases where you didn't even get to see the characters in their costumes. You just got to see the actors portraying the characters talking about mm -hmm. their comic book origins. You know who stole the show from me, though, was Cyborg. And I think I'd say that cyborg is such a cool character ray fisher seems like a great actor he comes from a stage background so he clearly is going to be able to have the chops to pull something like this off and what's the guy victor stone is yeah. the guy's name and he was a football player that's the best name for a football player i've ever heard so turning <laughs> that guy into a cyborg makes total sense to me obviously as soon as momoa was cast as aquaman all the jokes that i saw that i right. made myself right. went out the window and i'm like if there's one dude that could legitimize playing aquaman it's gonna be jason momoa i wasn't aware i don't know the lore of aquaman that well Schnepp. i apologize i had no idea that his mommy was a god the god atlanta goddess atlantis right and his daddy was a lighthouse keeper? Yeah. That must have been a crazy weekend at Sandals. How does a guy who's a lighthouse keeper score with a goddess? Yeah, right? She probably washed up on the shore and, you know, he saved her and got her you back to You said that was the creepiest I've ever seen. <laughs> I thought it was gentle. She washed up on yeah. the shore. Yeah. Well, you take creepy or gentle. Yeah, I, you pick. I, I go gentle. There's some slapping, some jacking. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, man. I... <laughs> I oh, think yeah. that I think Cyborg. <laughs> I think Cyborg was the, was the steal for me yeah. because I didn't know enough about Cyborg, and I I remember when they announced, I was like, okay, we'll we'll see who he is. And mm -hmm. the, the look was all right. And then when they explain exactly who he is and why, and the, what they can do with him now with today's yeah. technology, I was saying that it's it's almost, he's like a he's kind of a version of Ultron in a way, and he, a good guy. Of yeah, Ultron, and yeah. and I think that, that to me. I really am excited to see what they do with this character, and I really love the Aquaman stuff. I, the second they announced Jason Momoa, I was on board mm -hmm. for that. Flash was the one thing 
I'm still very excited to see Flash. And then, you know, I was speaking to Dennis about it afterwards, and I think I was speaking to you as well. And I thought, and I just self admitting not a huge Flash comic book guy, but I thought that his origin story was actually what they explained that it's everything basically from the TV show. But you're saying that it that's just from the TV show. It's a melding of all the different comic books, but it's directly it's directly from the TV show the way they explained it yesterday. Yeah. And it's basically, I think it makes sense because what they're doing, I, I like if if what it seems like what they're doing with the Flash television show. It, and all the movies is they're making it so that we could have a crisis on infinite earths we could have earth one earth two or three earth four all these different earths batman v superman and wonder woman all the movie characters are all on some other earth you know and then all the tv characters are in a, in a different universe and the flash has the power and the ability because of his speed to to kind of dimensionally go and travel between these different universes they're already establishing that with flash going to earth two in the tv series we don't know what Earth the movies are from. And plus, who would ever call, like, if you were from Earth, you'd be like, obviously, we're Earth 1 and you're Earth 2. They're like, no, 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 you're Earth 2. Like, we, right. you know, that would be something like, we don't know how many Earths there are, but I like that at least they're opening that idea with the Flash so that they make it so that you can have the TV show and the movie Flash different. I liked hearing that explanation, too, yeah. because it does legitimize him as a part of the Justice League. Like, I didn't know if the Flash was just, like, a really fast dude, and it's like, well, you know, Daryl Green's great, but is he going to help out superheroes? No. He can run so fast, he can get to another dimension. That's yeah. pretty crazy. And your boy Kevin Smith made a great point last night talking about Cyborg, mm -hmm. how the upgrades to him can be so much more plausible now yeah. in this new society that we live in than when the character was originally conceptualized. But my takeaway from all three of these little featurettes was that it's characters trying to re retain their humanity while still embrace their superpowers, even with a guy like Aquaman, who is already half God. Well, I think that they also confirmed the time travel, that that's going to happen in the movies as well. You know, they're adding, that's what I liked with DC I was talking about last night. They're going to have to add brand new things and stuff that we haven't seen in the Marvel mm -hmm. Cinematic Universe. And they have to do that with the characters that they've established really well in their comics. But the other thing, the one that I went, whoa, finally, Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. We finally get confirmation that Green Lantern is coming back. Now, we don't know if it's going to be Jon Stewart. Um, we don't know yet, but they certainly said that he's coming back. I'm, I love that because they need to get past that last disaster. Sure. So now bringing him into it and the popularity of that character. Are you excited that he's coming back? Yeah, I really am excited. I mean, you know, those posters that came out, Unite the Seven, and then on this concept art, you only see six people. You're like, well, who's the seventh? Is it Martian Manhunter or is it going to be Green Lantern? It should be one of those two. And that they said, oh, oh, you know, we're going to go through all these different worlds and we're going to travel to space. And they said Green Lantern Corps. So you're like, all right, well, the Green Lantern Corps, as we all hope, is going to be a Green Lantern Corps movie where it's like kind of like space cops and we'll be in outer space. It could be DC's Guardians of the Galaxy if they play it right. Um, having Green Lantern come in, I don't know if he'll come in at the end of the very first Justice League movie, but I, th I feel like. I don't know if they're going to introduce every single one of these members in the Batman v Superman movie. You know, it's called Dawn of Justice, but I think we'll see the Just League form by the end of the it film. It seems like he's going to be on another flight. Like, like, yeah. like he's on a later train yeah. getting yeah. the Justice I don't think League he's than be, everybody yeah, I don't else. think he'll be in Batman They might Superman. tease him, like how they teased Wayne Enterprises yeah. in, the, in Man of Steel. You right. might see some sort of tease, but sure. I don't even know how you tease that. Like, there's going to yeah. be enough in Batman v Superman just with those two dudes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now we've reached that part of the show. It's buy or sell. Pretty simple how it works. Ashley's going to read some more st stories in the movie world, and we are simply going to buy or sell it. Ashley, what's next? It has been reported that filming for the third film in the Triple X series, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, would begin filming soon. Well, now it looks as if the film has found a potential villain. The Hollywood Reporter has revealed that action icon Jet Li has been set to play a leader of the team that will compete against Diesel's. Jeanette Byers saw the addition of Jet Li to The Return of Xander Cage. Bye, 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 Jet Li! This is one of the greatest action heroes around. Any addition in any movie with Jet Li in it automatically makes that movie at least f five times better than what it possibly could have been. Maybe six times. So I'm 100% into this. I love Jet Li. I want to go to your apartment and see like the beautiful mind math that you use to come up with the Jet Li equation. I would agree with you. Though. I mean, yeah. I would buy it too. Nobody talks about how cool he was as a creepy villain in Lethal Weapon 4. Sure. But he was really, didn't have a lot of dialogue, but man, can he kick some ass. Yeah, I buy it as well. I mean, it's Jet Li. And to watch, yeah. this is, 
these movies, I think that this is what Vin Diesel has done well in these franchises too. He's going to embrace the fact that you got to go. I think that this movie's not going to be as silly um, with that fun action that the Fast and Furious movies have been. It's probably a little more serious, but they're still. Mm-hmm. Gonna, it's going to be an extravagant, very extravagant. I think that that's what you do with Jet Li. And I want to see him and Vin Diesel fighting. That would be because Vin Diesel's like what six one, six two, whatever he is, and then you have Jet Li who's little but can kick the crap out of you just by. Jet Li oh, yeah. would destroy, destroy him. him. I mean, yeah. that's a good lesson for I, the kids at home anyway. Never pick on the little guy, no. and especially never pick on a guy who has been in a UFC cage a number of times. That's our boy, <laughs> yeah. Conor McGregor. Right. Yeah, well, Conor McGregor is also... I mean, that's, that's the thing. We don't know exactly what Jet Li is going to play. From what the report was is that he's going to play a rival team member. We don't know if he's the big bad in, throughout the whole thing. Right. I kind of hope that he is. But just the fact adding him to another action movie, action franchise, big buy. All right, Ashley, what's next? While speaking with the site, is it any good? Director Quentin Tarantino hinted at what his next film could be. The Hateful Eight director revealed that he has an idea about a 1930s Bonnie and Clyde gangster style film, which takes place in Australia. Christian Byers saw the sounds of Tarantino directing a period piece gangster film. I don't know if I could buy anything more than this. <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, the... Anytime you hear Quentin Tarantino saying, well, every time I go to Australia, I think about this idea. It means he's been thinking about it for a while. And he's not the type of guy that releases that type of information if it's not going to happen. He's done that in the past when he did it for, for Hateful Eight. I'm kind of glad. I really enjoyed Hateful Eight. And I really enjoyed Django. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's getting a little bit past the Western now, now going into the 30s. And to do it in Australia, which mm-hmm. is very different. To see him do a gangster film, the dialogue in a gangster film, the violence that will... like To me, one of the problems I had in the Hateful Eight was that the, the he did that kind of over the top violence that was in Kill Bill, which mm-hmm. I didn't think fit. Um, and I think then you have like violence that he does so well when you look at something like Reservoir Dogs or even Pulp Fiction. And for him to do that in this movie, in a Bonnie and Clyde movie, you remember he wrote Natural Born Killers, mm-hmm. um, and he wrote that movie before it, it was. He doesn't like. I don't think he really likes to put his and name. And True Romance was also a Bonnie yes. and Clyde mm-hmm. type film. Yes, both those movies. He does this well, and to do it in that time period. Oh man, this is a huge buy for me. What do you think? Just a question of how long I have to wait. I mean, this seems yeah. like it was made for him. First of all, just that time period in general, regardless of what continent is you're on, it sounds perfect for Quentin Tarantino. Mm-hmm. Christian, you're absolutely you hit the nail on the head. The dialogue, the snappy wit you can inject in a Body and Clyde movie. And I look at that picture and I'm like, all right, we're, we're definitely casting Adam Driver as Clyde, right? <laughs> and, and, right. And, and then and then as the female, it's like I don't know who. He, maybe like a Brie Larson or a Jennifer Lawrence. Brie type, Larson's a great they, call. They, they yeah. can have a lot of fun with this movie and Tarantino at the helm it's just a question of a how long do we have to wait and also is he because he really seemed like a comic-con when he was talking about the hateful eight how much he is now intrigued with the idea of doing something for television and like a mini series or something on Netflix based on Bonnie and Clyde might be a great foray into TV for Mr. T I a hundred thousand percent buy this beyond any way you cannot buy it I destroy that and explode it with a buy I cannot I <laughs> Him, like, he just showed Hateful Eight in Australia, and I think that was the, probably the nail in the coffin for him. Like, I'm doing this. Because he's been talking about, I might do a science fiction film or another horror film. He didn't know what genre he wanted to play with next. We definitely felt like, oh, he's not going to do another Western. He's going to do something else. Because he keeps threatening to retire. Like, I've only got two or three movies left. So you're like, make these good. So this sounds fantastic. I didn't even say Katie Sackhoff could pro- probably play Bonnie, you know? Ooh, that's like she, not a there's bad There's a whole call. bunch of people that are in his wheelhouse that, you know, yeah. hey, like, there's a lot of people that he hasn't p- p- uh, played out yet, you know, who haven't been in his films yet that, you know, he's possibly going to pick. So. Well, let's not forget how great the other Bonnie and Clyde film is with, with, Warren, with Warren Beatty, Beatty and right. Faye Dunaway. Well, Faye Dunaway, one of the most beautiful women on the planet in that movie. Yes, and, and, and again, this isn't going to be a Bonnie and Clyde remake. You know, this right. is going to be a, a telling... Tarantino doesn't do remakes. Tarantino right. always does his original stuff. It's just going to there'll be similarities, oh, yeah, very yeah. similar. Bonnie Clyde esque, yeah, like so, you were yeah. saying with True Romance yeah. and Natural Born Killers and movies like that, to where you're going to get these brand new characters and everything. He's even talked about this this week about how his he has got like his connected universe. Somehow those characters will tie into other movies that he did, just even by name or reference or everything. Too. Is this not one that you would rather <laughs> see him change the war less though? Like I kind of like to see something a little more faithful to the true events than I would with something but like World War Two when he changes the the hit like, like I like. Like that for that, it just no, 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 no. But this isn't that because we're because in war, this is this isn't in the Bonnie and Clyde universe. This isn't a Bonnie Clyde movie. This is just like just, a movie that's similar to Bonnie right. and Clyde, to bank robbers and stuff right. like right. that. It's then just do like, whatever the hell you. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. also, you know what? Even though it's set in the 1930s, that's never stopped him from having an incredible soundtrack that spans all yeah, centuries. Right. So I cannot wait because yep. like. 
Uh, Holly and I were listening to this uh, this uh, BBC station where he was just basically talking about his technique and how he picks the music and how he he selectively has just a rough story and then starts combing through his archives of music and just assigning musical moments and scenes and then that helps him actually write the entire thing yeah. so the musical soundtrack is so important to every single tarantino film you hear a certain song now it is in the radio you think about the scene yep. from his movie you don't think about what that song yep. is even about so he transforms these things so i cannot wait for that sound the songs are characters in yes his movies. Definitely. colin coward opens every show he does every morning with the thought with the song from kill bill oh, and right, i always right, think yeah. kill bill nothing mm. else all right ashley what's next well, it looks like the rumors of director Juan Antonio Bayona directing the Jurassic World sequel are heating up again. Bayona, who is most known for directing The Orphanage and The Impossible, had been considered once before, but it did not get the job. Now, Variety is reporting that Bayona is being considered once more after his recent departure from the World War Z sequel due to scheduling conflicts. Mark Byersell, Juan Antonio Bayona directing the Jurassic World sequel. I would buy it. I, I mean, the guy's a good director. And that, that's what you want in Jurassic World. Whether he has a track record so far that makes me think he can make dinosaurs leap off the screen the same way that Steven Spielberg or Colin Trevorrow did, I don't think I need to see that. I need to see a great storyteller. I can't remember who said it was probably somebody in the Star Wars universe when they're talking about getting a director for a movie. It's not a question of how many big budget blockbusters have you done before. It's can you tell a captivating story on screen? That was certainly the case with The Impossible as well as The Orphanage. So if that speaks anything to this guy's talent, I am sure that he's going to make a great Jurassic World movie if they use him. Yeah, man, I buy this big time buy because I think that a lot of people don't may not have seen The Orphanage or not have seen The Impossible, both powerful mm -hmm. movies, really powerful movies. And you see that that is a director's I mean, you watch what he does in both those movies and you can tell the director's stamp. It's not just about the characters. You know right away that you're watching a talented filmmaker. I think the Jurassic World sequel needs that. I really do. I think that we need to, like you're saying, go more on the story here. We got the spectacle. We got all that from Jurassic World the first time. The, I mean, this, this the fourth movie, whatever it was. And it was fun. It was fluffy. We had fun and fluffy, though. I don't want to do fun and fluffy. Mm -hmm. If you want a franchise to continue to work, you can't just make it fun and fluffy every single time. you got to change it up. Because, look, as much as I loved The, um, the Force Awakens, it's fun. It's got say fluffy. It's got a little you bit of fluff on fluffy. it. It does. It's got some fluff on it, and I'm okay with that. But I don't want Episode Eight to have to have fluff on it, and I don't think it will. And I think that's the same thing with this movie, and that's why you get a guy like this. Mm -hmm. I think that he's gonna be he's gonna bring some seriousness to it because there is a a bit of there are, there are tons of people watching right now who hate Jurassic World. There are tons of people who are who love it. I want to see the haters. balance go up. So you fluff haters. I want to see him go up a little bit more. I think this guy's the right choice. Sure. I I like the picture that Ray chose. He's deep in thought. He's really thinking, how am I going to change Jurassic World? What kind of human story will I be telling in this world of dinosaurs Can I and fit humans? in that gate? It looks pretty that's narrow. Right. How will the water scene work? <laughs> they, that's why they hired him because of my impossible work with water. Uh, the, if you haven't seen The Impossible, it's a really good film. Um, it's a it's an interesting choice. I'll say that. Like you know, like that's a then they're gunning for him because he was involved before. Then he skimped off to do the zombie film. And then he could, scheduling conflicts. Could it be because they're like throwing wads of money at him? He's like, I must withdraw to go to the world <laughs> right. of the dinosaurs. He doesn't really talk <laughs> like that. That's how I talk for him on the show. But I think it's a good choice because you're absolutely right. Where do you go? Like we saw Jurassic Park, and then we saw two. Um, I don't know if they were fluffy sequels, but they were just sequels. Even though Spielberg did the second one, it was still kind of like, eh, you know, it was good. You, I mean, who who doesn't like dinosaurs tearing stuff up? So it you know failed out in the third one. They never got the fourth one. There was going to be you know cryo mutant dinosaur human hybrids. For you know, we read about that for years. Finally, we see Jurassic World, and it's exactly what all of us wanted to do: was go to that park. So they like, you know, they they gave what they promised. They're like, look, the, the the park is open, and there's kids in the weird little gyro things, and everyone's like, look, we're feeding dinosaurs. That's what you know. I would love to go to a, a dinosaur park. I want it to happen. I don't want the horror and terror of a Tyrannosaurus Rex chasing me. So that's what that's kind of what Jurassic World did, and now they've done it. It made billions of dollars. What do you do for the sequel? How do you one up that? You're right. You've got to go into a story about what is the after effects. Of a Jurassic World, how does that how does that affect the rest of the planet? Well, that was my complaint is that they're just setting up Jurassic World a little bit too heavily for a sequel. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, we don't it don't leave anywhere. We come back to the world again, and so how do you do that in a convincing manner? Because they threw so much at you in Jurassic World, which I loved watching. I didn't think it was fluffy, and I happen to enjoy fluff. It feels good on my neck. I don't know how you do this movie more realistic. This guy's probably got the answer if anybody does. 
All right, Ashley, what's next? It looks like Jennifer Lawrence will be starring in Sony Pictures' Merida. Merida is the story of Merida Lorenz, who was involved in an affair with Cuban dictator Fidel Castro and was part of the plot to assassinate him. Schnett Byers saw the sound of Merida. I'm buying the sound of Merida. <laughs> I think it, it's a, it sounds like a really great, intriguing storyline, and getting her to be involved and be the lead actress is a coup. I think she's an incredible actress, so I buy it. I buy it as well. I certainly buy it for the premise. Um, and I wonder, and this is it's no, no fault of her own, but I, I wonder if I'm getting a little fatigued with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, and, and again, she's, she's great. She's good in everything that she's done. I think that I don't think she deserves to be nominated in Joy. Um, I think that Joy, for some, every time she does a movie in this time, they're, they're just giving her Oscar nominations because there are a lot of better actresses, I think, this round of the Oscars that should have been nominated. Charlize Theron for Fury Road that's, well, should have been in. That's there. what I mean. So I just and but I like Jennifer Lawrence. I just wonder because it's like every the rotation. It's like okay now this girl, this girl, and Jennifer Lawrence. So this Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence. I wonder if I'm getting fatigued. But the story itself, the movie itself, sounds pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You got to tell me who's playing Castro before I totally sign off on this movie. But yeah. her as a talent in a premise like this, totally bite. I thought she was great in Joy. Like, like it nominated worthy. She, if she wasn't top five, she was top ten of the year for me in the best lead female. So she deserves most of the recognition that she has got because she can play a variety of roles and it sounds like you're gonna have to incorporate a lot of those skills into something like this but again we haven't been to cuba that much like, like we don't know that much about this world and fidel castro and right. the only thing i know about fidel castro other than the dictator stuff is that he had to try out with the washington senators in like the late si early true? 60s yeah yeah oh, wow. yeah if the senators gave him a job Point, he might never have been the dictator that we know and probably don't like today. So I want to see more about that dude's personal life. And I think her as a vehicle to tell that story would be absolutely breathtaking. All right. That's everything in Buy or Sell. Now it's time for Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at AMC. There's only something that came out about 10 years ago, because 20 years ago there was one release, and we covered it. It was from Dust Till Dawn. I think uh, they put it in. I can't. Uh, we covered it last week. I think man. that we put it. They maybe went to like wide release. It just shows you January has always been a dumping ground, and sometimes they're like, yeah, I don't even put anything out this week. But 10 years ago, we had Looking for Comedy in the Muslim World and Underworld Evolution. Um, yeah. Uh, Schnapp. What stands out? Uh, well, for me, what stands out is uh, it was such a bummer because I love Albert Brooks, but that was like such a misfire that that film, uh, the looking for comedy in the in the Muslim world. I had to look elsewhere for comedy when I saw that film. It's just not <laughs> working for me. Underworld Evolution. I like the Underworld movies, and I have a soft spot for it, a fluffy spot for it, if you will, Aww. because I wrote the uh, animated version of Underworld. It's uh -huh. called Anim uh, Underworld uh, Endless Wars. Find it on the YouTubes. Um, but the Evolution film, I thought it was it was fun. It was an interesting sequel to uh, uh, the Underworld franchise, but it didn't do it as well as what I liked. I liked the very first Underworld, so I think that 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 whole thing could still work if they did a reboot. Mark, what stands out to you? I'm a monster fan of Albert Brooks, and I enjoyed looking for comedy in the Muslim world for what it was. Coming out 10 years ago in 2006, it was a, a bit of a different time than even it is now as far as people traveling and going to places around the world, especially talking about a subject that's as subjective as comedy is. I love Albert Brooks. I recommend you check it out, and then you can form your own opinion on that. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn is when I want to talk about Christian. Because, <laughs> Go God, I love watching this movie. Robert mm -hmm. Rodriguez directing it. What a slam, bang, fun, kind of stupid little fluffy action horror thriller George Clooney before he really knew what he was doing on screen as far as being a movie star but God he owned it in Quentin Tarantino with the hand and they shot through his hand and they duct taped it together in the movie Salma Hayek Cheech Marin's hilarious Fred with the Hammer Williamson great movie Tom Savini with his strange penis gun <laughs> that right remember that right yeah. I, uh, I'm probably going to say Underworld for me because I, what it was, even though I don't really love the movies themselves, I think that Kate Beckinsale proved that she was a badass yeah. in the movies. And I, and I did, look, they're still making this in the new one coming out this year. Yeah, there's another one. So uh, it's the one that it, it's, it's built a franchise. It was a movie that, I, like I said, between her and did Len Weissman do the second one as well? I believe he did. It was, like, it was always funny to me. There was like vampires versus lichens. Lichen. Just call them werewolves. No, nah, no. Nah. They're lichens. Yeah, yeah, what sells more tickets? Like, yeah. at some point, if you're going to make 19 of these movies, call them, call them yeah, what my mom right. knows to be that's the furry right. beast right. that everybody's afraid of. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's it for Rewind this week. Now it's time for Mailbag. 
you guys have submitted questions. We take a bunch of them. We read some on the air. Ashley's got a couple. What do we got? Ooh, Saul Masters writes, Hi, Collider. You've been the soundtrack to my morning for the last few years now, so thank you, and keep up all the great work. My question is concerning Zac Efron. I have always defended him when people have said he is a bad actor, and I genuinely feel like he has a few great performances in him, but he keeps doing the same frat boy topless role. Ooh. Do you think Efron will become a great actor someday? Thanks. I certainly think he has the, the chance to. He, he's got the chops, and I think I reference it a lot. I know John references it a lot. Me and Orson Welles. He's great in that movie. He, he, was, he was good in The Paperboy. When he's in the, and he was really good in Neighbors, because even though Neighbors was a comedy, there are some moments to where he had to be dramatic in that, and it works. He just takes a lot of these crappy roles, whether it's The Lucky One or um, Charlie St. Cloud. We or, are your friends. Or We are your friends. I mean, these movies, <laughs> and, uh, or the, the Awkward Moment, all these movies, he's got more. I think he has five fresh reviews for all his movies on Rotten Tomatoes and like 15 right. rotten. And it's like his agent or whoever it is is giving him the worst roles. He should be doing a lot more because he is talented. I think he's got a chance to do something really good because he's gotten himself past that high school musical stuff. Mm -hmm. Because he's like, even though some people go past this stupid stuff that he did on social media this week, that's something all uh, dopey. But as far as what he does as an actor, I don't see a lot of people hating on him right as far as his abilities go i think he's got a shot what do you think i think he's a great actor i think you're absolutely right in that like you know some actors are just really good actors but they get really bad roles whether, whether their agent is just like i just signed you up because you had this one hit here's 10 movies that you're mm -hmm. gonna do this year you're like oh god you know it's a two week then i get a break a two week then i get a break and you don't know what whether these movies are gonna be good or not it's a crapshoot so it's a, i mean for most actors, they're like, hey, sign me on. Some actors have that ability because they've reached that level. They can pick the, the scripts. But a lot of people are just trying out blindly, hoping, oh, please cast me as this square pig. I fit, I fit. I don't think Zach's had that issue, but he's had, like, Paperboy. If you haven't seen that, it's a fantastic film. It's super weird. I always like to say that Nicole Kidman pees on him. It's a very weird film. It's strange. <laughs> it's freakish. You got to see it. I totally forgot she pees on I know, right? Him. People and she totally and does. I will always remind you about that, Mark. In that movie. That, I wouldn't right. expect anything less from you, Dr. Snap. <laughs> look, the, he, okay, look, he's a moron on, on social media, okay? Right. He's got to learn how to handle that better because if you think Martin Luther King's dream was for you to get 10 million Instagram <laughs> followers, you're a little off on that boat. The problem is he is a talented actor, and I like seeing him in movies. I don't think Bad Grandpa this weekend is going to change any of the perception we already have. Right. You know what, Will? If you come back to High School Musical, one more time the anniversary is this week he's the only guy from the original cast not showing back up are you too good for high school musical you take your washboard abs you get back to the thing that started you and then you can grow from there ashley back me up i completely agree what's wrong with zach efron taking his shirt off what's the big deal <laughs> i think that he's taking whatever job is going to pay him the most and these jobs are probably paying him the most so take your shirt off all you want i know that he has talent don't but you think that damages his career though eventually because you're not you're only going to get those type of offers until people well, are sick. Yeah. He's going to have those offers for 20 more years. So I guess he's like, I'm going to keep these abs. Yeah. I'm gonna, this, he's got this body. He can, he can rock that. Those Saul Masters, he's going to have those abs for a really long time for you. So don't worry about that. I All agree, right. Mark. You're right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> All right, Adriel Valquez writes, Hey, guys, longtime fan. I just wanted to plug in my thought of the possibility of having Gavin O'Connor direct Creed 2 since Ryan Coogler will be unavailable to direct Black Panther. What are your thoughts on him being the director? I know you guys don't very much like these questions, but given Gavin directing Miracle and Warrior, I feel like this would be a great fit. Thoughts? I love this question. I love this question, and I think it's an amazing suggestion. Gavin McConnor doing Warrior, which that movie, if you've not seen Warrior, I mean, that is a film to me that is probably the best MMA movie that you will ever see. I haven't seen it yet. So it, I've, you've never I, seen no, Warrior? I've oh, man, it. I know that you, oh, you love it. Oh, treat yourself. See, the, the, my only problem with him doing Creed 2 is that it takes it away from my dream, which would be Gavin O'Connor doing another movie that's like a sequel to Warrior with just another like March Madness-style UFC tournament. What if Creed with, fought in the MMA? Th yes. There you go. Yeah, you sold me. Yeah, Creed fought MMA. Um, I think uh, this is a great choice. They have to get someone like him to direct it. They have to get someone. I still think that you have to have Coogler writing this thing, helping produce it, because it is it is ultimately his vision of the reason we're in the position we are today. Mm -hmm. So a guy like Gavin McConnor is a great choice. But Schnepp, do you think this is a good choice, or do you think there's someone else out there? 
Um, having not seen Warrior, I can't speak for it. Um, that picture creeps me out. It looks like he's about to get his ass beat by Creed if he doesn't say yes. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, <laughs> Stallone's honestly, like yeah. the emperor back yeah. there. He's like, <laughs> you better do it. You better do it. Creed 2. Um, <laughs> pee on him. <laughs> you know, going back to what we said about the Jurassic World and getting a director who can add something a little bit different. I think that's what will help Creed 2 is not going back to the ring, so to speak, and having more fighting. But but building up the character of who Adonis Creed is. For me, that was the only weakness that I really found in the Creed film is I don't think we we, we knew enough about that character. We knew he was angry. We knew he grew up as an orphan. And that's what kind of drove him. It was this this anger. But I never found out enough about that. You know, we saw a flashback of him as a kid. And then he's, you know, I want to I want to fight, but I want to earn it my own way. I don't want to use the name. It was a little surfacey for me, to be honest. I thought it was really well done. Everything about it, you know, it felt like a natural, uh, you know, sequel to a Rocky franchise, but with this with this new kid taking the mantle. But I want to know more. I want to know more about that character. And I think that's the way to go with a Creed sequel is, yeah, of course, you want him to have that title fight. He, You know, you, it, it's following that Rocky mythos. But I want to just find out a little bit more about what it was that turned him into who he is. You know, I did something very rare for me on this show. I actually did some research. So Gavin O'Connor has Jane Got a Gun, which has yep. been like forever waiting for this movie to come out. It's been like right. years. I really want to see that movie. And then he's got The Accountant coming out, which I believe is finished. That has Ben Affleck in it. So that could be a really good movie mm. too. But even if those movies aren't that good, he did Pride and Glory, which isn't Miracle that good. Too, didn't he? But, but that's what I'm saying yeah. is that the sports movies that he does are so good. Right. I don't care what other movie you made. I don't care if you made the Planet of the Dinosaurs or Fantastic Four. You know how to make a good fighting movie, so Creed 2, he'd be a great choice. I like this question. Give this kid a job in Hollywood. Agreed. <laughs> All right, now it's time for you guys. You guys have been submitting your questions through Twitter. Ashley is the gatekeeper. Make sure. I hope they've been being nice. They've been kissing up a lot. They've been great. kissing up. Aww. Okay, so Ashley has chosen some. <laughs> Ashley, what are they saying? All right, Patrick Bateman writes, what's your thoughts on an American Psycho reboot with Adam Driver directed by David Fincher? Oh man, Ooh. you know the, the you say a reboot of American Psycho, and I go no, and then you go <laughs> Adam Driver, I go oh, that's not bad, and then you say David Fincher, I go all right. I I hate that idea. Let them do I, other cool wait, stuff. But wait, but like it's Why not is, it's not that I'm at, it's not that I don't want to see it get done, but if it right. was gonna get done, I don't I agree with you. I don't want to see all it right. remade. But if, if, I, if, if that's I was your forced choices, into a weird universe where this was announced, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. I would have just because been you like, know, you can't you let Fincher finish his weird HBO music video series? <laughs> right. Why are you going to get him back into the... What you if know? The Flash ran so fast, uh, he right. got us to another dimension <laughs> right. where where these guys are both free? Because I agree with you. Like I love these guys' talents doing original works. I don't need to see them doing a reboot of anything, particularly something like American Psycho. If you do it, you can get a new actor, you can get a new director, but you better damn well keep Huey the new, Lewis in the news in that soundtrack. Well, that's the thing. That's what I mean. Is that I don't want to see... This is there's, yeah. There are certain movies that just don't need to be touched that's one of them right but everything gets touched yeah. everything gets remade so it's like if you're going to put together a, right. a remake team that's the team the i like food's to on see. the table there i've touched <laughs> that's it. it right that's so. it all right actually what's next christopher woodburn writes what will be the fallout if god forbid batman versus superman is a disappointment <laughs> hashtag beef jerky mark <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I can't I can't imagine Batman v Superman being that big of a disappointment yeah. and look with all the other stuff they did a great job last night of showing us that they have so much more to offer the world than just Batman v Superman yes it's a it's a cornerstone of everything they're trying to build it is the foundation upon which we get the Justice League and the Flash and Aquaman and all that good stuff but if this movie isn't great we're going to be able to survive it now. And I have that faith after seeing the Suicide Squad trailer and seeing these other character development little sketches that we got last night. I still think it'll be great, but if it's not, we're all going to survive. Well, what's the fallout? I think that Snyder is part of the fallout. <clears throat> I think that, uh, sure, that, sure. that Zack Snyder will be part of the fallout for sure because if it's not, let's, if it's good, then he's fine. If it stinks, if it does, I don't think it will be, but if it stinks, all eyes are going to be turned on him because then people are going to be saying, especially the fans, they're going to be saying, that's the guy doing Justice League? No, thank you. But I do agree that it's not going to crush the DCU because then you have Suicide Squad and you have Wonder Woman, which so far, so good. And then everything else that they announced last night and these characters, the way they're developing them. So there's ways to recover from it if it's right. not good. But I think that Zack Snyder's the guy that's going to be in trouble. Yeah, I don't see how it could not be at least good. I, I really... 
I don't want to put blinders on. I don't want to have super high expectations when I walk in because when you do that, you're going to be disappointed. If you're like, it's got to be exactly what I admit, what I've thought. It's a different film. It's not going to have all the things that you want it to be. So you just have to go in with like, I hope it's good. I think it's going to be more than good. I mean, everything I've seen from it, it looks fantastically shot. I like the story progression. I know that they've shown Doomsday and they've shown a lot of stuff. Now that we know that, we've moved on. And we're like, all right, we get it. It's Dawn of Justice. They're not even being shy about it. That's why they did that special last night. It was a lot. Of, it was a good recovery move for them because they're like, look, we got Doomsday. We've got Lex Luthor. They're announcing stuff that you've already seen in the trailer, and they show the scene where Wonder Woman shows up. So they're letting you know this is a formation of the Justice League, and there's a whole lot more. There's a whole fourth quarter that we're not even looking at yet that hasn't been revealed that's in that movie. That is the formation of the Justice League. Another threat shows up. So we're going to see a lot of action, big action. This is a gigantic film that not only has Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman, but it's got all the rest of those people in it. Aquaman, everybody else. I don't know if they're going to chuck every, like just pile them on at the end. I don't know, but I don't think it can fail necessarily. I just, all I hope is that it's better than good. The other ace you have in the hole is Ben Affleck, because if you don't yeah, like the way right. that the that B versus S is directed, but right. you're like, oh man, I loved the way that Clark Kent yeah, I love that character. I love right. Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor. You have a guy who can step behind the camera yeah. and do a pretty good job, which he's already being rumored for Batman, for the standalone Batman movie. So if you give him a more prominent role behind the camera as well as in front, that could be good tidings if Zack Snyder fails, which I don't think he will. I don't think he will either. And, and you hear what Ben Affleck's actually been saying about Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. And granted, your, your actor is going to be saying nice things about your director, but I think that he is, um, especially before the movie comes out, but he's been saying the things that he's learned from him because because he's never worked on a scale right. this big. And because he didn't deny or, or say, no, I'm not going to direct the Batman. He just kind of skated around it. But he was talking high praises right. of Zach. Inspired. So. Inspired. That's just the word. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, a yeah. great word to use. That has It's a loaded word yep. in, in a positive way. It's not fluffy. It's not it a is fluffy not. word. You Let's, know what? You keep saying fluffy. That reminds me, Creepshow had a creature inside of the crate, and its nickname was fluffy. fluffy. Oh, I like that. All right, Fluffy, what's next? All right. Don't call me Fluffy. Oh, that is like, <laughs> am I hairy or something? Oh, come on. <laughs> Speaking of, hashtag Slappin' Jack. Yeah. Fluffy. Uh -oh. Slappin' oh, Jack gosh. sounds like the name of Gabriel Iglesias' next special, who is known as Fluffy. All right, DeAndre A. writes, can we get more Japanese horror movies with The Ring 3 coming out and a possible new grudge film? Hmm. Uh, what do you think, Shnip? I would love to see a return of the J-horror franchises. Like, I, I mean, we always forget we live here in America. There are movies coming out every week in other countries that are fantastic. So import them on over here. I'd love to see them on the big screen. So. Yeah, I think it'll happen more. And I think that what isn't the ring? Is the ring the it's the third one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it will like, be the yeah. third one. They made a second one, which was just garbage. No, but yeah. the third one could be could be really good. Same that thing happened with the Grudge franchise. But the first Grudge was pretty creepy. I don't mm -hmm. think it was anywhere near as good as the original movie. Juwan which it's based was what it was called. Yeah. Juwan. And, and a lot of those movies, it would be nice just to see them come over here yeah. and be subtitled and play in American theaters, but it's just really hard to get that done, where it watch, a lot of times big studios want to get their hands on it and make their own movie, which, look, if you if you get in the theater and you scare me, it's okay. Yeah. Remember the kid in the grudge with the mouth? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just kept opening, yeah. like, what a, the mask? Here's a question about The Ring, though. How are they going to make it work? Nobody has v, VHS machines anymore. The They're download, like, they just, digital, digital download. Is this that how they're doing it? <laughs> Dude, that's Maybe. people just click left that's and right like with yeah. no repercussions yeah. for their clicking action. You've the got mail. Yep. That doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> You don't yeah. hear that. <laughs> Meg Ryan comes yeah. out and kills He's Tom Hanks. Like, ah! yeah. um, let's, <laughs> let's take two more. All right. Jai Patel writes, what makes a good movie poster? Look, I think that it depends. Like there's, what they've been doing a lot of lately, and I think we had that, uh, we were going back and forth on this last week with the Free State of Jones, it's just that face it's just everyone just has right. a, you take the actor and if he's really famous or she's famous and you just put the face and you feel that's how we sell the movie but the flip side of that is just something like the revenant which mm -hmm. the face added in with the with with the woods in the back and, and the fact that you feel how cold and it, all of that you feel the survival in the picture that works i think that for me what works in a poster is give me enough of an idea of what i'm expecting mm -hmm. or a good marketing thing where I look and I go, well, what's that? Like, I want to know more about that. Not just selling it off the celebrity. What do right. you think? 
I like a little bit of mystery with my posters, um, but if I had to have something there in the forefront, it would probably be the stars of the movie because if you have a good start like Leo and the Revenant, that face shows you so much. I always think back to a poster I had on my wall when I was a kid. Clear and Present Danger with Harrison Ford, the Tom Clancy movie. Harrison Ford showed you so much about the character of Jack Ryan just in the look. Like Harrison Ford's got kind of a two-face anyway. Like Here he can look all intense and badass, then over here he can look concerned for his family. That's exactly who that guy was. I don't I'm also a big logo guy, though. Like, I want a cool logo. I want a cool movie logo. Like, if you look at Star Wars, that's a great logo. You look at Ride Along 2, it's like something that I made in Photoshop, and I'm a mutant on that. So I don't know how to do a lot of those more high-tech kind of things. Right. I like a kick-ass logo and show me the stars. Uh, I, I'm a, a big fan of uh, movie posters that uh, show a little bit of the story, show a little bit of, like, highlight reels. Like, like we, we were talking about some of the great uh, Drew Struzan uh, 80s posters, not just uh, you know Star Wars, but a lot of these painted posters from the 70s and 80s evoke a tone and a mood and a feel. I'm not a big fan of the giant face Photoshop stuff. I think it, I mean it works. There's Leo, and you see some like you know light, like he's out, obviously out in the snow, and there's some kind of flames and stuff. It, it evokes something, but it's like to me, I, f I feel like a little bit more of the story in that's revealed in the poster is really cool. I mean, I'd like to see uh, the the posters where it's like the back of a character, you know, in shadow. I'd like to see those go away because uh, we've already seen that done a billion times. So um, now I was going to get to another Twitter question, but something just dropped right now uh, uh -oh. that, that I wanted uh -huh. to let everybody know about. Hold on to your butts. Star Wars Episode Eight. <laughs> Release date shifts to December 2017. What? I'm reading this off of Collider.com. Uh, I don't mad? know what <gasps> the reason is yet, uh, but I think maybe if it's script or everything too. I'll tell you what. As much as much as I want to see Episode Eight in May and see it in a year and a half, it's the same thing that happened with Episode Seven. JJ wasn't ready. He needed some time. He took the time, and it worked. And look what they did in December. I. We're still getting Rogue One, and then from Rogue One, we'll have to wait another year to get Episode Eight. I know it sucks, but I'm cool with it. We'll save the miserable one later. Schnepp, do you care? Uh, that that news is, you know what? It's cool for me because I actually liked seeing Star Wars in December. It was really fun, and it was just it was a kind of a great end of the year treat. I mean, look, it's been so many years I can't even remember seeing Star those original prequels. Plus, I hated them so. That you know them coming out, and they and one of them came out on my birthday. It was like, oh, such a bu actually two of them came out on my birthday. So it was one of those uh, things where I'm like, it you know, it's a really crowded summer nowadays. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it really summer really starts you know in March now. It feels like you know, like what is happening? So yeah, like end of April, then you got May, June, July, August. So I don't mind seeing Star Wars a little bit later, and especially seeing Star Wars where it's like. Oh, here's all the big Oscar contenders and all the big heavy movies and the biopics and all the real serious movies that you're like, yeah, you know, let's really get into the serious tone of movies. Here's something that's just straight up fun, adventure, fantasy. It doesn't bum me. I know you have to wait six more months, and you're thinking he's Mark is recovering from that yeah, sheer yeah, yeah. <laughs> incredible <laughs> shock to the system. Yep. You can see it on his face right now. The pain, the strange, like you know, just trying right. to stay awake, like lightning shocks behind his brain right now. Yeah, look, I'm I'm gonna pout as a fan <laughs> because I wanted to see this thing, and I was so excited that it was only gonna be a year and a half. So. I understand the reasons you want to take the time to make the movie. I really think this is a lot of box office motivation, too, because you want to go after that record. You want to go after all the money you can make. And this movie will make a lot more money if it comes out around Christmas than it will the summertime when there's always something else, some other superhero, big, big budget blockbuster coming out in two weeks. So I understand that, okay? But what you have to do for me, Star Wars, as a loyal supporter since the day I was born, is that on its original release date, you have to have a Mari Povich special where he announces who Ray's daddy is, okay? We'll, have, we'll set it up, we'll have Daisy Ridley there, and he'll announce at the end of that hour's show. I think that'd be fair. You know, it's interesting, too, and a lot of the fans are commenting on this right now as well. Um, that also means that we're looking at Episode 8 versus Avatar 2. Ooh. Oh, bring it on. Are you I, kidding me? I, listen, it's it's a different situ situation. It's not it's not a matter of if, is it going to win. Of course it will. But going again, look what episode seven did. It had nothing to go up against. Nothing. And so it's interesting to see that now that December is going to start. We talked about this. We talked mm -hmm. about this a while ago that eventually, especially after what Horse Awakens just did, 
December is going to become the new ground to put sure. in those big blockbuster movies because of exactly what you just said is that that summer is getting too crowded. So I'm sure that if Ryan Johnson, it wasn't as big of a sigh for Disney when they're like, ah, should we move it? Yeah, we've had success before. Yeah. Sure, move it. It was more probably like that than it was like, hmm, can we do this? It was a no brainer. I just think all those Navi should just stay on Pandora. Hey, I, I think, think it's a win-win situation. We get a sequel to Avatar and Star Wars. Yeah, you know, it's I, I, I hate all He's this. A fan, I'm pretty excited. Just I yeah. know. I mean, just the competition thing is silly to me sometimes. Like we get to see both of these <laughs> movies. You know, it's like I don't care how much money they make. All right, so we kind of ran out of time here because of that story. I'd like to... Good catch by you, though. That was great. I got to thank the fans as well yeah. for, for letting me know. So thank you guys very much. Thank you guys for watching. I would like to thank the guys at the table. First, sitting over here, he is the Schneppinator, John Schnepp. Yo. Where can I find you? You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. And check out Collider Heroes. It just dropped where we got really extra sweaty about it. was this, right before the Suicide Squad trailer came out, which came out last night. But check out all that news. It's available right now on Collider uh, Heroes. Just check it out. And you could get my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to tdoslwh.com. The former happy i'm back now you're back to being happy <laughs> so, look some of my best friends are navi I mean, they can all come to earth <laughs> if they want chill at my place uh you can find christian and i schmoes no on youtube you can find me at mark ellis live on all the social media channels this weekend tomorrow night through sunday i'll be at nashville tennessee nashville zany one of the best comedy clubs in the entire country see you guys there and our host, she is not fluffy. She is Ashley Mova. <laughs> Ashley, where I'm can they? I'm not fluffy. Find? You're so sweet. See, there you go. <laughs> so, where can they find you? You guys can find me getting laser hair removal on Twitter and on Instagram <laughs> I at said Ashley fluffy, Mova. Not hairy. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, guys. <laughs> and me, like Mark had mentioned before, we did a Suicide Squad trailer reaction video on the Schmoes channel. If you want to go check that out, love to get your thoughts on that. And you can check out Collider Jedi Council tomorrow. We will be live. Not live. We'll be on. On. It'll be regular time tomorrow. I thought we were going to shoot today. But make sure you hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get your questions on there. Going to be a fun show. Thank you guys so much. John will be back on Monday, I believe. That's all I got. Peace out, you humps. <laughs> hey, guys. If you like this Flapping video, down. click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.